welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Now, so before, before, before we went for the break, I was just explaining to you what happens when God is about to perform a miracle for you. But before, before, before we, we, we go back to that, I would want you to look at uh, 2 Kings chapter number 3 and verse 27. That's the last verse in that chapter. 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse number 27. Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. Now, this is a story that I would want you to pay attention to. It's very, very vital and very important. Now, this is happening under the reign of uh, Jehoram, who was the son of Ahab. He began to reign over Israel in Samaria the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. And then he reigned for 12 years. And the Bible goes on to say, there was, um, let me explain this so that you understand. And the Bible goes on to say, and there was the king called Mesha, who was the king of Moab. And this king of Moab was so loyal to Ahab. And he would give offerings to Ahab every year about 100,000 sheep. So take note of that. Take note of that. Take note of that. He would do that yearly, 100,000 sheep and 100,000 gods. He would do that every time. So now when uh, Jehoram the son was now king over Israel, the Bible says, and then Mesha rebelled against Jehoram. Investigate the scripture. How did he rebel? He did not come against Jehoram to fight him. No. He simply stopped giving him offerings. And that on its own was regarded as rebellion. He stopped giving to the king of Israel what he used to give before. And that was regarded as rebellion. Now, I can give you another scripture that supports that, which is, which is, which is something which is very, very amazing, uh, if you would want to look at it. You see, when, 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 when Saul, in the book of uh, 1 Samuel, chapter number 10, verse number 27, before we go back to the uh, previous chapter, uh, the previous book, when Saul was anointed by Samuel to be king over Israel, he received oil upon his head and he was anointed and he was declared king over Israel by the prophet, a well-known prophet by the name Samuel. So after the inauguration, then Samuel presented the man before the people and said, this is going to be your king who shall go ahead of you and lead you into battles. And then soon after that, the Bible says, then Samuel asked the people to go back home. And then Saul also went home to Gibeah. But then verse number 27, but the children of Belial said, how shall this man serve us? The children of Belial, meaning the children of the devil. And these are people. These are people. But the Bible says the children of Satan, the children of the devil, they said, how can this man save us? 
and they despised him. How? They brought him no presents. Wow. They despised him. They despised his authority. They despised his potential. They despised his rulership. How? Not by what they said, but by what they did. They did not bring him an offering. That's despising the man. How do you, you see, this was a culture. When somebody is placed over you, you would accept and receive the person by giving him an offering. Now, I'm just giving you this scripture to support our previous text. Where Mesha, the king of Moab, despised Jehoram, how? By stopping the offerings that she used to bring to the king of Israel. That's despising the man. Could that be another way that you have despised the Lord? Because the Bible teaches me that we should honor the Lord with our substance. That's how we honor the Lord. We honor God not when we kneel down, not when we roll on the floor. We honor God with our substance. With our substance. If all that you do is pray and shout, you see, those are not substances. We'll talk about that later. But you, you honor God with your money, with offerings, tangible things. That's what you use in honoring God. So understand that. So now if you go back now to the chapter that we've just read, you will understand now that um, this is what is happening. And uh, before we get to verse number 27, now I'm explaining to you uh, this, the sequence of events. So when Mesha stopped sacrificing and bringing offerings to the king of Israel, he, the king of Israel said, I will not, I will not uh, take this for, for granted. This is a, a very serious insult. And then he sent a message to Jehoshaphat the king of Judah, and explained the case to him and said, this is what has happened here. This man has rebelled against me because he has just stopped bringing what he used to bring to my father. So I would want to fight him. Let's fight. And Jehoshaphat said, I'm going to join you in this battle. I'm going to fight with you. And then Jehoshaphat came. And another king again joined them. The king of Edom also joined them. So there were now three kings against one king. So on their way to the battle, it took them more than seven days to reach their enemy. What had the enemy done? Simply stopped bringing their offerings to the king of Israel. And these guys were ready to fight over that. So they are going to kill him. They are going to attack him because he stopped giving them something on a yearly basis. This would trigger a fight. Hmm. Hmm. So seven days into this journey, now they became thirsty. The horses and the people, now they didn't know what to do. Where do we get water from? They couldn't find any. And now, when they realized that this issue had really become a problem, then Jehoshaphat the king asked a very important question. Is there no prophet here that we can inquire for? And Jehoram had a servant, one of his military guys, said to him, 
There is a man that used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. There is a man that we know, he used to pour water. He used to wash Elijah's hands. Which means ministering to him. And what did Jehoshaphat say? He said, he has the word of God. Jehoshaphat, how do you know that he has the word of God? Why? Because you cannot do that unless God talks to you. You cannot serve a man of God. You cannot pour water, wash him, make him clean, defend him, do everything to serve a man that God has called unless you have access to the voice of God. Jehoshaphat said, if there is such a man who once did that, he can't be doing that unless he hears from God. He hears a word from God. He hears a word from God. No one can do that unless he hears from God. He hears a word from God. They never saw him pray. They didn't say there's a man who fasts 20 days, 20 nights. No, they say there's a man who ministered unto Elijah, supported the hands of Elijah. He supported the hands of Elijah. He ministered to the works of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, he has the word of God. There is no way that you can sow seeds into this ministry. Because what I'm telling you now, we want to build a, a massive studio, Christ TV, so we can get into many homes and bring more souls to the kingdom of God. This is a missions week. And when you see me doing that, you are looking at the work that my hands are doing by the grace of God. And when you put your money into my hands, you have washed my hands. You have supported the work that I'm doing. And there is no way you can do that and not have the word of the Lord. After that, it's impossible. So when you pour your water into the hands of the prophet, you remain with the word of God with those that would need help in the future will have to come to you. Jehoshaphat and all the kings had to consult the men that ministered to the men of God. They will come to you for help. Your family members will come to you for help. Take this as an opportunity. When you make this commitment right now, you are ministering into the hands of the men of God. You are administering, that's help. You are bringing souls into the kingdom of God. When we go out, when we minister and we declare peace over people, and people are coming to the Lord to receive life, you will be shocked when you get to heaven one day and the Lord is showing you the number of people that you have brought to him. And you wonder because you never did any crusade. And God will say to you, when, when you supported the man that was doing it, it was you doing it. You ministered into the hands of the prophet. So understand this now. So they went to him. So upon arriving, the prophet himself, Elisha, got angry. When he looked at Jehoram, he got angry. And he said, why have you come to me? Why have you decided to come to me? You have rebelled against the Lord. Had it not been for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I wouldn't have looked at you. But because of him, I will prophesy. And what did he do? He said, bring me something to play. Notice how a miracle is about to happen. You guys, you can't bring me problems, just problems here. Bring me a vessel. Bring me a keyboard. Bring me a harp. Something that you hand over to me is going to help me to prophesy to you. 
Something has to be given by you guys. Bring it to me. And when something was played, he began to prophesy. And then what happened? He then gave them instructions. Before any miracle takes place, there are instructions. Dig ditches everywhere. That's what they did. Move around. Make some pits everywhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness. This is a desert. Open up places everywhere. That's what they did. And the prophet said, you shall not see the wind, neither shall you hear it. There shall be no clouds above you, and yet you shall have water. <sighs> My brothers and sisters, watching me from every, any part of this world. At this moment, it ceases to matter where you are, how dry your situation is. What is coming your way now is an instruction which will determine your next harvest, no matter how dry your place is. The prophet said, you shall not... Have the wind coming. You shall not have the clouds coming. But the water that you desire, you shall have it. It will not be a normal circumstance. The environment will not change. But what you have believed God for, you will still have. No matter your surroundings. Everything around you is opposing your miracle. And yet the prophet said, you shall still have the water that you desire. You shall still have the water that you desire. You shall still have the water that you desire. Take note of that. Very important again. This is the prophet of God. And to me, it's amazing because how do people that are fetching for water go to the man? They are not desperate for a prophet. They don't miss a church service. They are thirsty. They need water. And the suggestion was, let's go to the prophet. And water is a material thing. Why go to the man of God who is a spiritual person to ask for anything material? Because people talk about materialistic preachers. Preachers that talk about tangible things. This is a prophet visited by kings because what they lacked was not anything spiritual. They lacked something material. And they went to the spiritual man because it is always the spiritual people that administers material things. They went to the prophet because what they needed was water. So to me, these guys might have had a revelation that most of you people don't have. When you want to see a material change in your life, you go to the spiritual person. It was water that they wanted. So they went to the prophet, and what did they get? Water. They got it from him. They got it from him. They got it from him. You want a house? You want a car, you want a better job, you want a husband, all those things are material. You want a child, all those things are material. Where do you go? You go to the prophet. You go to the spiritual person. Partner with the spiritual man. So now, you're looking at that. So, so understand this now. Understand this now. So what did he do? He said, okay, so uh, you have done that. So, wait. Let's see what is going to happen. The Bible then says, and then tomorrow in the morning, soon after the morning burnt sacrifice. <laughs> Notice the time when the miracle happened. Soon after the offering. 
water was gushing out. As soon as the offering was handed over to God, then the miracle happened. After doing everything, it wasn't about the ditches, it wasn't about the prayers, it wasn't about any other thing, it was about the offering. When it arrived into the presence of God, then the water was provided. You can do all things in life. Get more education. Those are just empty ditches. Until you erect an altar in the morning, you will see every, every attempt in your life being filled with water. Whether there's a new program that you are doing, you're going to university or what, though, though all those are going just to be empty ditches. Nothing is going really to bring change into your life until there is a morning sacrifice. When you erect that sacrifice in the morning, my God, then there was water all over the place. There was water all over, which means at some point in the morning, these guys were asked by the prophet to sacrifice some of the goods that they had. Bring your cattle. Bring your gods. Let's erect an altar in the morning while they were looking at empty and dry ditches. So as they erected an altar, the power of God was activated to bring a miracle. So you have done, you're just like these three kings here. You have done everything. You have set your traps everywhere. You have tried to make connections by everybody or to everyone. But all those are simply empty ditches. You'll never see water in there until an altar is raised. I'm coming back. Please, stay tuned.